Hi, I'm Rob and I was the programmer responsible for converting Adrian's game Doodlebug to the Atari ST all the way back in 1992. Martin has asked me to explain how the game scroll system works, so hopefully with the help of a few live widgets I can do that without things getting too confusing. Scrolling games use the idea of a big picture, of which you can only see a small part at any one time. Here you can see a shrunken down version of the big picture for Doodlebugs level 1. The little flashing frame here is the part of the level we can currently see over here in the Atari live view. Ideally we'd like to be able to store the big picture in the computer's memory as you would see it here and simply move our frame around it to explore the level but unfortunately that would use more than three times the entire memory of a standard spec 512k Atari ST for which the game was written. So we somehow have to reduce this right down so we have room in the computer for everything else and we do this by breaking the big picture down into these small tiles here and then using them to build the part of the picture that we're currently interested in. In order to know which of these tiles to use where, we use what we call a map, which is really just a big list of numbers, each of which references a tile. Here we can see the part of the map which contains the tile references which are being used to build the current screen. At first glance it might seem quite incomprehensible, but if you look carefully you'll see there are patterns in the numbers which are quite similar to the tile patterns on the screen. Here you can see some zeros, which are the clear areas of sky, and here are some 120 somethings, which if we look around halfway through the 256 tiles, you can see they're being used to piece together the rabbit. Anyway, by using this system of tiles and a map, we are able to reduce the memory used to store a level down from way over 1.5 megabytes for this big picture to just under 60 kilobytes for the tiles, a saving of over 95%. So that's how the graphics we're using to show the backgrounds on the game are stored. Now let's talk about exactly how they get put onto the screen. As this game was designed for a standard Atari ST which doesn't have any hardware scrolling, what we call software scrolling techniques were employed. The difference between hardware scrolling and software scrolling can be best explained like this. Imagine you're standing looking straight at a brick wall and you want to see a different part of the wall, perhaps to the left or the right. With hardware scrolling all you need to do is move your head but with software scrolling you actually have to move the wall. What you're seeing on the screen is just a screen size block of memory, 32,000 bytes of it and on a standard Atari ST if we want to look at a different block of memory we're really quite limited as to where that can be. On an STE we can move smoothly across the memory just as we would if we were to move our head slowly from left to right while looking at that wall I was talking about. But on a normal ST we can't do that smoothly, so we have to do the equivalent of moving the wall, which is much more work. So we can just find out which tiles go where and copy them to the screen memory, right? Like, how hard can that be? Well, not in this particular case we can't. You see, these are the tiles that are being copied to the screen right now, and each of them fit perfectly into the grid pattern on the Atari screen. More specifically though, into these columns which are 16 pixels wide which limit where data can be positioned horizontally on the screen. Copying our tiles into these columns alone means that scrolling left and right is limited to jumping every 16 pixels like this, which looks pretty bad and is hardly conducive to a fluid gaming experience. So if we can only copy tiles to the screen down these 16 pixel wide columns, how can we get horizontal scrolling that say moves at 8 pixels or even in the case of Doodlebugs every 4 pixels? Well, the solution is best demonstrated if we zoom in a bit to the rabbit. So here you see the tiles which are lined up with a grid, so they can be copied really easily into the vertical columns. Because we can't draw our tiles directly in between the vertical columns, we actually need to shift the pixels of the tiles to the left or the right, effectively making a new tile, which consists of part of our original tile and part of the one next door to it, which has moved in. With the pixels shifted across we can then copy this new tile to the screen directly and give the impression that the original tile has moved. So we've just fixed our problem, right? Draw the tiles directly to the screen when we can and when we can't just shift everything over a bit. Well yes we can do that but there's a slight problem here and that is that shifting a screen load of tiles before copying them to the screen takes a long time on an ST without a blitter chip. And Doodlebug was written for an ST without a blitter chip, so all this shifting is done on the Motorola 68000 CPU, which wasn't designed to be efficient at doing that sort of thing. But there's no way out of it. We, we 
do need to shift those tiles sideways in order to get the scrolling that's smoother than 16 pixel jumps. But the good news is we don't need to shift all of the tiles all of the time, just the new tiles that are moving into the screen from either the left or the right. This is where those shift buffers over on the left come in. We've already said that Doodlebug scrolls at four pixel resolution. When the screen moves to either the left or the right, it does so four pixels at a time. We already know that we can copy tiles straight down into memory when our background tiles line up with the screen's memory 16 pixel wide columns. Call that position 0, so we just need to worry about scroll positions 4, 8 and 12, uh, the in-between positions. That is why you can see we have three scroll buffers here. This one keeps a stash of all the tiles that are currently on the screen shifted across to the left by 4 pixels. This one is the same, but with all the tiles shifted left by eight pixels. And finally, this one here, which holds all the tiles on screen shifted left by 12 pixels. If we look at the ST screen, we can see we are currently on a 16 pixel alignment, which means our background is being drawn directly using these flashing tiles from our tile set. But if we move just one position or four pixels to the right, we can see that our screen is now being drawn from the first buffer here. If we move another position, or a total of 8 pixels to the right, the screen is now being drawn from the second buffer. And if we move one more position, or 12 pixels to the right, the third buffer here is used to draw the pre-shifted tiles to the screen. If we move yet one more position, or 16 pixels to the right, you can see that with our background lining up with the screen memory again, we can copy the tiles directly to the screen from the tile set. So by having a copy of all the tiles on screen shifted left by 4, 8 and 12 pixels, we're able to build our screen any scroll position without it taking too long and everything grinding to a halt. Whenever new tiles are needed to scroll onto the screen from the right, those tiles are taken from the tile set and shifted into the appropriate buffer. The process is still quite intense, but we only need to do a column of tiles as opposed to a screen's worth, so it's actually not too bad. Because our shift buffers are a fixed size and we can't just keep going as we're adding in new tiles, uh, we need to use this wraparound method whereby when we move to the right and we uh, fit, run out of space on the right hand side of, uh, of the buffer, uh, we start to copy our new data into the left hand side just behind our reference position. Here you can see how we're using two block copy operations to construct the full screen. The left of the ST screen is copied from the right side of the shift buffer and what's remaining on the right side of the ST screen is copied from the left of the shift buffer. But Doodlebug doesn't just horizontally scroll you say, what about vertical scrolling? Well a similar approach is used but instead of refreshing whole tiles sideways we just add in new lines or partial tiles just behind our reference position. Once we start to mix in vertical scrolling and our buffer reference position starts to move up and down as well as left and right, things start to look a little mad. But if we pause things for a second, we can see exactly where the graphics in the buffers are copied to the screen. Here's where the top right part of the screen comes from. Here's the top left and the bottom right and finally the bottom left. So I think that pretty much covers it. What I know would have been completely impossible to describe in just words or very difficult with still images, uh, hopefully it's become a little clearer with some live visuals. Thank you for sticking with me and hopefully if you had any questions about this topic before we started, uh, at least some of them have been answered now. Thank you very much.